Hello and welcome to this Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcast. I'm your host, Leah Rosen, online editor for Bioprocess International. Before we get started, just a couple of notes. This webcast is being recorded and will be made available for replay in the multimedia section of our website. We've muted the audio lines, but we welcome you to type in your questions for our speaker in the question and answer window on your screen. After the presentation, we will begin the question and answer portion, and I will ask our speakers your questions. Your questions in the question and answer window will only be visible to myself and our speakers. So thank you for joining us today. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speakers, Maya Yubcheva, Chantal Gaskin, and Florian Durst from Thermo Fisher. Thank you, Leah, for the kind introduction. My name is Maya Yovcheva, and I'm glad to be here today and to have the opportunity together with my colleagues to introduce the solutions that Thermo Fisher Scientific has to offer for the production of virus-like particles, and more specifically, for the production of virus-like particles in the back of virus-based insect cell expression system. I would like to start with an overview of everything that we have to offer across the vaccine manufacturing workflow, starting with the wide variety of a portfolio of products and solutions across the entire uh, workflow, starting from upstream and downstream. Going to the main topic of this webinar today, I would like to start with a, a brief overview of what why we are interested in, in, in this topic. Vaccination is one of the most powerful techniques to protect humans and animals from infectious diseases. The WHO estimated that in 2019 alone, between two and three million lives were saved due to the vaccination. <clears throat> the demand for vaccines is very strong and continues growing each day with new discoveries of infection pathogens, such as seen in the recent pandemic outbreak of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Such outbreaks also require robust and flexible manufacturing solutions and implementation of innovative technologies to simplify processes and production and speed up timelines. Taking a look at the different worldwide initiatives on the COVID-19 vaccine development gives us a good sense of how important the speed in vaccine development and production is. At the same time, this overview also highlights the diversity of approaches reaching from older and proven technologies like inactivated virus and protein subunits to more modern and innovative modalities such as the mRNA vaccine. For today's talk, we have decided to focus on virus-like particles as vaccine modality. Virus-like particles, or VOP, are protein assemblies that mimic live viruses but do not contain any genetic material, and therefore are safe and attractive modalities for vaccine development. VOPs can generally induce broad and strong immune response thanks to preservation of many essential epitopes, and therefore, Virus-like particles have gained increased attention as potential vaccine candidates. One of the most commonly used platforms for the production of virus-like particles is the baculovirus expression vector system. Baculovirus expression vector system is a versatile and robust eukaryotic system for the production of foreign proteins. It has also proved to be as efficient as traditionally egg and cell-based processes in production of vaccines. Also adding the benefit of short production times and high production yields. This system also enables multiple post-translational modifications, which are more similar to those occurring in mammalian cells, allowing the expression of multi-protein simultaneously in a single infection. Some of the examples uh, of numerous virus-like particles that have been expressed in the back of the virus expression system are the newly found SARS-CoV-2, also uh, HIV, HPV, uh, and chikungunya virus. With this brief overview, I wanted to move on uh, and introduce to you our newest addition to our portfolio of microvirus-based insect cell protein expression system, which is the XPSF expression system. The XPSF expression system 
is the first chemically defined vacuole virus based into system that is designed to achieve high protein tires and is also highly scalable suspension system that can be easily adapted to a large scale production process. An important aspect of the XPSF expression system is that it's a xeno free and chemically defined platform that is completely free of animal derived or any undefined components which also makes it a very favorable platform from a regulatory standpoint. Also note that this system is offered as a starter kit that includes all the necessary components for end-to-end -end production. And if you're new to the system, it will uh, help you to get started in no time. This slide shows uh, the components of the ESF system. It is consistent of cell media, protein expression enhancer, transfection reagent, and the back-to-back -back cloning kit. All of those components are optimized to work together in order to achieve the highest results. Now, I would like to tell you a little bit more about the, each of the components. Starting with the XPSF CD medium, it is a chemically defined isolate and animal origin free medium that is manufactured under CGMP guidelines and is a complete medium that can be used for the entire insect cell workflow from the cell growth to the back of the virus generation and to the protein expression uh, infection. The XPSF 9 cells are high density suspension cell lines that is derived from SF9 cells. These cells, the line achieves consistent and high cell density growth over multiple passages, uh, as shown on the two graphs on the right. The top one shows a growth curve um, where the cells achieve peak cell density of about 20 million in the XPSF CD medium. Uh, and the bottom graph shows the consistent doubling signs over uh, 15 or more passages in the XPSF system. The XPSF CD medium is also available in a dry powder format with a custom order for your large scale needs. The powder format is made by using our advanced granulary technologies, uh, which is characterized by auto pH, auto osmo, fast dissolution, and mixing time. They're very favorable uh, when it comes to uh, dissolving this media and preparing a liquid form of it for uh, your process needs. The XPSF system also comes with a new and improved transfection reagent called XPFectamine SF. With this new transfection reagent, we have adapted the back of virus production protocol to a suspension-based format that allows for high tiger production following transfection. Notably, it eliminates the need for time-consuming amplification steps and is highly scalable as shown on the bottom right graph, which allows you to get the desired amount of virus in one step. The system also includes a protein expression booster in the form of chemically defined and animal origin free enhancer that is essential for obtaining high protein titers and has been specifically designed to work in concert with the rest of the XPSF system. We have found that the most optimal time for the addition of the enhancer is 18 to 24 hours prior to infection and addition of the virus for the cell. As I mentioned earlier, the XPSF system is a versatile and highly scalable system and can be used to express proteins in a variety of formats. It can be easily scaled down to 96 or 24 D12 based which is suitable format for high throughput screening of multiple constructs, but it also can be scaled up in uh, all available size shape flasks as seen on the, on the graph on the left. Additionally, the XPSF system can be further scaled into waveback or third-tank bioreactor system. Here, I'm showing you an example of the production of two proteins in a 22 liter uh, wave back system with protein volume of 10 liters. And as you can see, we're showing a comparable growth in infection kinetics between the shape class and the wave system. In both cases, we achieved about 70% of the titers of the shape class. 
which shows that the expiative system can be scaled up and still produce high titer protein. Next, I want to go back to our main topic of the webinar and show you a few examples of how the XPSS system can be used for the production of different virus-like particles. On the left of the slide, we are showing the production of chikungunya virus-like particles. The chikungunya virus is a member of the genus alpha virus and the family Togaviridae. The chikungunya virus structural proteins, shown here on this little schematic in the center, are translated from a subgenomic 26 mRNA with a single polyprotein, which is then processed concentrationally into five structural proteins, the capsid, the E3, E2, 6K, and the E1 protein. Those five proteins have been found to assemble in a highly immunogenic VOPs that have been recently studied as a vaccine can potential vaccine candidate. When we compare the expression of chikungunya virus VOPs in the XPSF system and the controlled condition, we saw about 15 times higher amounts uh, of the E1 protein detected in the supernatal of the XPS system, showing the potential improvement that can be obtained from the XPSF system for the production of chikungunya virus virus like particles. On the right side of the slide, I'm showing the production of human papillomavirus VOPs. HPV is a DNA virus from the papillomaviridae family, and it has been shown that the major structural protein L1 of the human papillomavirus can self-assemble and form virus-like particles when expressed in a heterologous cell substrate. As you can see here on the right, we have achieved about three times higher yield of the L1 protein in XPSS system compared to the control showing a second example of the versatility and the potential of the XPSF system. Additionally, we uh, were excited to be able to collaborate with the Protein Expression Core Facility at the University of Queensland in Australia, who has an extensive knowledge and expertise in the virus-like practical production field, uh, and were gracious enough to evaluate the production of murine polyomavirus VOPs in the XPSF system. The wild type murine polyomavirus like particles is determined to be a 45 nanometer in diameter, consisted of 72 capsomers, and each capsomer is composed of five copies of the major structural protein VP1, which has the expected size of about 42 kilodaltons, as shown here on the western plot in the center. The group in the University of Queensland first did a small scale optimization experiment where they looked at the harvest times and the temperatures uh, to identify the optimal conditions for the expression of VP1, uh, and which happened to be a temperature of 27 degree and harvest time of 72 hours. Furthermore, those conditions were then used for a large-scale VOP production, as well as purification and characterization of the VP1 VOPs. A standard purification protocol consistent of cell lysis, PEG precipitation, and polygen, polygen chromatography steps were used to obtain purified VOP samples that were then analyzed by various analytical methods, one of which you can see on the picture on the right is the electron microscopy image showing a nicely formed virus-like particle with expected size of about 45 to 50 uh, nanometers in diameter. In summary, the XPSF system is a versatile system that can facilitate the expression of high levels of different proteins, uh, in particular virus-like particles. But as seen on the TM image on the right, the downstream of virus-like purification in the virus system can still be challenging. And that's why I would like to pass the ball to my colleague Chantel to tell you a little bit more about our solutions uh, on the downstream side of the workflow. Thanks for walking us through the upstream workflow, Maya. Next, I'd like to touch on the downstream purification workflow and some of our purification solutions here at Thermo Fisher. Um, so here you can see a typical downstream workflow, starting with clarified cell culture harvest, working your way all the way to your final formulation step. 
Our Capture Select and Poros products fit nicely in the standard workflow, providing solutions for your initial capture or affinity chromatography, as well as your polishing steps. Our Capture Select resins provide a high selectivity and high purity to your process, while our Poros products, including our ion exchangers and HIC resins, provide high capacity, high chemical tolerance, and excellent scalability due to its linear pressure flow characteristics. In some cases, a purification workflow will not include an affinity capture step. In these cases, a large number of chromatography steps are required to achieve the desired purity profile in your final product. So with each individual chromatography step, whether it's ion exchange or hydrophobic interaction, there will be some loss of product, and this could, in, uh, this could significantly impact your final yield. So including an affinity step could significantly improve your final yield by producing high purity in a single step without the need for numerous uh, intermediate and polishing steps. This could also reduce your process development time and overall bioproduction time as you scale up your process ultimately getting your product to the clinic faster. Now I'd like to introduce our Affinity resins, which make up our Capture Select technology brand. Our Capture Select ligands are all antibody fragments based on the camelid antibody. Using our unique screening process, uh, the VHH fragments from the antibody are screened for their specificity to the target molecule, for their desirable processing conditions, as well as their ligand stability. The ligands are produced uh, recombinantly in yeast, which makes them animal-derived product-free, and it also makes our affinity products compatible for uh, commercially viable processes. Our affinity products are currently being used from small bench scale applications to large commercial product manufacturing processes. We also offer custom ligand devel development, providing solutions for your more unique molecules. Some of our capture select ligands are immobilized onto our Poros base bead. Our Poros products have three unique characteristics that we like to highlight, the first being the large through pores. The pores on the Poros bead are about 1,000 to 2,000 angstroms wide, which allow for higher flow rates and reduced processing times, making them ideal for large molecule purification, such as VLPs and viral vectors. The bead is also an average of about 50 microns in diameter, allowing for high resolution across low and high flow rates without compromising impurity clearance. Finally, the bead has a polystyrene divinyl benzene material of construction, which affords a rigid bead, making it stable under high pressure conditions and harsh chemical exposure. The bead rigidity also provides a linear relationship between pressure and flow rate during your chromatography, as I will highlight on the next slide. Here we demonstrate these characteristics using a model protein study. As I mentioned earlier, the 50 micron diameter size of the Poros bead is ideal for high resolution in your chromatography. As we see here on the far left, starting uh, at about 100 centimeters per hour in yellow, uh, we're able to achieve three clearly resolved peaks with nearly baseline separation. This resolution is retained even as we ramp up to 1,000 centimeters per hour in black. In the center here, we see that unlike the agarose-based Q sephiros in black, uh, high binding capacity is largely retained in our porous resins. Um, even af after we ramp up flow rates from 200 to 900 centimeters per hour. Finally, on the far right, here we demonstrate this linear relationship between pressure and flow rate. In the case of our cation exchanger resin, Poros XS, we see that linear pressure flow curve being maintained from 0 to 600 centimeters per hour. And this would be true also for our other Poros resins. 
Now let's talk about application of our Capture Select and Poros resins. This uh, 2019 paper describes a vaccine candidate study where they set up a high throughput vaccine screening using epitope or affinity tagging. In this example, a four amino acid tag cons consisting of glutamic acid, proline, glutamic acid, alanine, or EPEA, uh, was inserted onto the C terminus of uh, multiple antigen candidates, and this enabled the use of screening via affinity resin. The C tag is stable and inert with low impact to protein folding and functionality, so that it doesn't require removal after purification. It's preferable to conventional tags, such as his tags, which are larger and more impacting on functionality, and which would utilize heavy metals for purification, resulting in hazardous waste handling and cost. Our Capture Select CTAG XL resin offers unique selectivity for the EPEA CTAG, enabling purification, simple purification of CTAG molecules. The resin allows for mild dilution conditions, such as magnesium chloride or competing peptides in solution, to protect the activity of the target molecule, as well as providing high recovery and high purity in a single step. Compared to HISTAG, we've seen upwards of 20% improvement in yield and about 40 to 50 increase in purity, as you can see in the STS page picture here on the, on the right. Um, C tags are currently being used in malaria and COVID vaccine campaigns, and our C tag XL resin is specifically developed to purify C tag molecules such as these vaccines in commercial processes. Now, let's revisit the baculovirus expression system, or BEVs. As we mentioned earlier, this is a versatile expression system in which insect cells are used in the production of recombinant molecules, such as VLPs. Expression in, in, in insect cells produce similar post-translational modifications as mammalian cells, but typically with higher yield and scalability than in mammalian cell systems. One of the downsides that Maya mentioned earlier include the production of uh, baculovirus particles alongside with your target molecule, which may be difficult to separate using your standard purification process. Thermo Fisher has partnered with the IBET Institute in Portugal to develop an affinity resin called BacuClear. Uh, this was designed to scavenge baculovirus impurities from your feed stream. You can ideally use this resin in flow-through mode as the resin will capture the baculovirus impurities, allowing your target molecule to be collected in the flow-through. The graph in the center summarizes the results from this paper. They achieved a VLP recovery of about 60% with an unoptimized process and about 80% removal of baculovirus impurity. The TEM scans here also illustrate the difference between membrane-filtered baculovirus material on the top row and BacuClear purified uh, product in the second row. You can clearly see here the level of impurity clearance. Now, we'll talk about combining the robustness of an affinity chromatography step like BacuClear with a high-capacity and efficient uh, polishing step. Our porous ion exchangers come in a variety of unique surface chemistries, uh, which provide our customers with a full range of strong and weak anion exchangers. Our ion exchangers can be used in flow through or bind in a loop mode with capacities of over 140 milligrams per mil of resin in the case of our strong anion exchanger, Poros XQ, and 120 milligrams per mil resin uh, for our strong cation exchanger, Poros XS. In this case study, clarified lysate of human papilloma virus-like uh, particles was applied to our Poros HS50 strong cation exchange resin. Uh, the material was directly applied and eluded with a linear sodium chloride gradient from 0.9 to 1.35 molar. 
the product peak presented at about one molar sodium chloride, and the eluate had a 98% purity with minimal host cell residual impurities as was outlined in the paper. The resin provided a higher binding capacity when compared to similar competitor resins, most likely due to large, the large through pores in our porous uh, uh, resin bead. This level of performance is ideal in processes where high product purity is required in your release criteria. And finally, I'd like to talk about some of the products in our portfolio which support the use of our Capture Select and Poros resins in your process. Each of our Capture Select Affinity resins have corresponding uh, ligand leakage ELISA kits for detection of leached ligand in your final product. Our affinity ligands also come in conjugated form to enable development of your own amino acids. We also have small-scale columns designed for process development and bench-scale screening, such as our mini-chrome and GoPure columns. And finally, we offer a range of HPLC columns to provide solutions for your target molecule analytics. And with that, I'd like to hand it off to our pharma analytics speaker, Florian Durst. Hello, everyone, and thank you very much, Maya and Chantal, for the great overview of Thermo Fisher's capabilities in the upstream and downstream processes for virus-like particle production. Um, my presentation will now focus on confirming the quality of products coming out of these uh, processes through QC testing. Um, as a start, allow me to give you a quick overview of Thermo Fisher's pharma analytics portfolio. The pharma analytics team within Thermo Fisher Scientific offers a set of solutions to help you confirm product safety and quality. All of our solutions utilize one of two highly advanced and well-established core techniques for fungal and bacterial identification as part of your uh, environmental monitoring plan, we offer DNA sequencing with our MicroSeq ID microbial identification system. Our solutions for mycoplasma and virus detection and residual host cell DNA quantitation are utilizing real-time PCR to achieve accurate and reliable results. For the next couple of minutes, I would like to focus on residual host cell DNA quantitation and mycoplasma detection as two critical tests to prove product quality and safety. The reason um, why you should be concerned with the amount of host cell DNA left in your product is that we know that host cell DNA can impact product quality, efficiency, and safety. Regulators around the globe therefore require you to limit the amount of residual DNA in the final dose. The World Health Organization, for instance, requests that you um, that the amount of residual host cell DNA per dose is kept below 10 nanograms. The FDA does not provide a specific number, but it requests that the host cell DNA content is kept as low as possible and that you are using a highly sensitive method to determine DNA levels. The FDA also suggests uh, that you conduct rigorous clearance studies throughout the downstream process to show that the process is capable of removing the vast majority of DNA from the product and to monitor process deviations. This means that um, residual host cell DNA quantitation may be performed at various stages throughout the downstream process, starting with the cell culture harvest all the way down to the final product. Any step before the harvest will, of course, involve a lot of cells and therefore host cell DNA quantities will be high. With every step taken in the downstream process, however, the DNA amount should decline rapidly and host cell DNA quantitation can be used to evaluate and monitor process performance. This high amount of testing, of course, requires a format that allows for a high throughput and ideally for a high level of automation. The Applied Biosystems ResDNA Seq assay is a fully integrated real time qPCR based system for the quantitation of residual host cell DNA. 
The system includes highly characterized DNA reference standards for a range of widely used host cell species. The key features of the assay are an ultra high sensitivity with an LOQ of down to 1.5 picograms per milliliter, a rapid and streamlined workflow with optional sample prep automation and time to results of less than five hours, and a reliable performance that provides consistent results from kit to kit, lot to lot, and year to year. Currently, we're um, offering assays for CHO, E. coli, HEC-293, as well as a general human kit, our newest addition to the portfolio and probably of vital interest to the VLP industry is an SF9 baculovirus duplex assay. And we have kits available for Vero, Picia Pastores, Dog, and Mouse. In addition to those kits available now, we will add species as they reach significance in bioproduction. Currently, there are actually a number of additional kits uh, in development. So um, yeah, keep, keep posted. <laughs> Um, in addition, I should probably mention our um, custom solutions team that will um, use our core technique and partner with you to make uh, the kit that you actually need if it's not already part of our off-the-shelf portfolio. Um, I promised a streamlined workflow, and uh, this is it. Uh, it begins with a sample prep where you can choose between manual and automated options, uh, providing the best solution for all throughput and automation needs. The option shown here is an automated version utilizing the Kingfisher Flex for up to 96 extractions at a time, uh, meaning that you could easily go through 500 samples per week. Uh, regardless of the level of automation chosen, the sample prep always features the well-established prep C chemistry, which is based on magnetic particle separation. The second and third step in the workflow is setting up and running the ResDNA seq assay on one of our uh, recommended applied biosystems real-time qPCR instruments. One reason to go with one of those instruments is um, that they are supported by the AccuSeq software, helping you during data analysis with automated calculations and enabling 21 CFR Part 11 compliance. This slide uh, gives a quick overview of some assay specifications. As it is the latest addition to our portfolio, I will focus on the SF9 baculovirus kit. On the left, you can see, again, some of the key features of the ResDNA-Seq system. Uh, and on the right uh, side, you can see some of the specifications set for the SF9 baculovirus kit. In conclusion, these are a high assay linearity as given by the R squared value of more than 0 0.99, a high PCR efficiency of around 100% with a maximum variation of plus minus 10%, an assay precision with a maximum of 10% CV, a limit of detection of 30 femtograms, and a limit of quantitation of 300 femtograms, and a linear assay range from 300 femtograms to 3 nanograms. In addition, all of our ResDNA seq assays have been shown to provide accurate results with various sample matrices relevant to the respective area of use. This slide uh, provides data to support the claim on both the high sensitivity and the broad dynamic range of the kit. Shown are the amplification curves for a tenfold serial dilution of the SF9 baculovirus mixed DNA control that comes with the kit. And uh, you can see that both targets are picked up at very low concentrations as shown by the dark blue um, curves crossing the threshold and that the dynamic range reaches from 300 femtograms to 3 nanograms, as demonstrated by the equidistant amplification curves. Here you can see um, a standard curve evaluation for both targets of the SF9 baculovirus kit with a squared values of 0 0.999 and uh, PCR efficiency of 103 and 97% respectively. 
These results demonstrate the high linearity and efficiency of the assay. Finally, uh, this slide provides uh, the recoveries for some of the other SDNA-seq kits. In all cases, standard DNA was spiked into a sample matrix. The DNA was then extracted in an automated sample prep using the PrepC chemistry on a Kingfisher Flex and quantified using the respective ResDNA seed quantitation assay. As you can see, the average DNA recovery range from 87 to 100% with an intra-triplicate variation um, in the single digits. Now, this should give you a first idea of the performance and consistency of the ResDNA seed system. And with this, I would like to move to the second part of my presentation, which is about mycoplasma detection. So we're basically shifting our focus from impurity to contamination testing now. Um, as you will be aware, mycoplasma is a known contaminant in various cell cultures, including mammalian, but also insect cell lines, and can affect safety, quality, and efficiency of biotherapeutic products. Because of this, it is a regulatory requirement to demonstrate that the cell culture-based that cell culture -based therapeutics are free from mycoplasma. Previously, mycoplasma tests were based on a 28-day um, cell culture method. This method requires extensive expertise in handling live mycoplasma and often need to be um, outsourced at high cost because of that. Um, this in turn adds to even longer timelines for lot release, and long timelines, in turn, render cell culture methods infeasible for short-lived products like cell therapy and tissue therapy products. Um, now, these are just a few reasons of why we have seen an industry-wide move towards alternative nucleic acid techniques throughout the past 10 plus years or so. Um, today, the rapid uh, today, rapid real-time PCR methods, such as the MycoSeq mycoplasma detection assay, are globally accepted by regulatory bodies for mycoplasma lot release testing and have really grown to become the gold standard rather than just an, an alternative to the culture method. The MycoSeq mycoplasma detection assay, uh, again, is a fully integrated real-time PCR-based system that has been specifically designed to meet regulatory expectations for mycoplasma lot release testing. The MycoSeq system features a demonstrated high sensitivity of less than 10 genome copies per reaction, a proven specificity with comprehensive detection of more than 90 mycoplasma species and no cross-reactivity to closely related uh, bacteria such as Clostridium, Lactobacillus, or streptococcus, and a rapid and streamlined workflow with optional sample prep automation and time to results of less than five hours. Now this slide shows the partial inclusion panel for the MycoSeq mycoplasma detection assay. Uh, the MycoSeq kit is capable of detecting over 90 mycoplasma, aculoplasma, and spiroplasma species with no cross-reactivity. We have directly wet lab tested 46 different species, including the ones commonly used in validation studies, shown here in red. Um, and the rest of the species have been carefully determined bioinformatically. All 46 species of purified gDNA that we could obtain were detected by the MycoSeq assay with very high sensitivity. This range of wet lab detection is more than any other kit has ever shown. Another uh, unique feature of the MycoSeq assay is its discriminatory positive control that is included in the kit. The discriminatory positive control, or DPC, facilitates the amplification of a modified PCR pr product with a melting temperature well outside the range of real mycoplasma amplicons. Using post-PCR melting analysis, therefore, you will always be able uh, to tell whether a sample contains real mycoplasma or your positive control. At the same time, 
the DPC maintains the same extraction behavior as genuine mycoplasma DNA and can therefore be used as a simple extraction positive control without the risk of unrecognized cross-contamination. Furthermore, we use the DPC um, as an inhibition control at the PCR level to determine whether uh, sample matrices have an impact on the PCR itself. And well, therefore the DPC uh, drastically reduces the risk of both false positive and false negative results. Because of these factors, the discriminatory positive control can be used as a risk-free surrogate for mycoplasma DNA or even live mycoplasma material during method optimization and early qualification. Uh, here's some example data demonstrating the sensitivity of the MycoSeq assay. Using a mycoplasma arginine gDNA stock, we can see that when analyzed directly by qPCR, MycoSeq can detect down to one genome copy as shown on the amplification plot. The additional um, melt curve analysis provides the melting temperature and the derivative value of the amplicon. Together, these three acceptance criteria, the CT, the melt temperature, and the, de the derivative value provide a much higher confidence level than methods relying on CT values alone. And once again, I promised a streamlined workflow, and this is it. You will realize that it looks fairly familiar, and that's because it is very similar <laughs> to the ResDNA seq workflow. Um, it again starts with sample prep. Shown here is a fully automated hands-free sample prep using the Automate uh, Express, which again utilizes the well-established prep seq chemistry. The same chemistry is used in other formats for manual and semi-automated sample prep, uh, providing the best solution for all throughput and automation needs. The second and third step um, of the workflow is setting up and running the MicroSeq real-time PCR assay using one of our recommended qPCR instruments. And finally, the AccuSeq software supports you with automated presence-absence calls uh, based on user-defined acceptance criteria and uh, by enabling 21 CFR Part 11 compliance. The whole workflow, again, can be performed in under five hours. Um, and also, again, the mycoplasma detection assay has been specifically designed to fulfill regulatory requirements. And following sample-specific validation, uh, many of our customers have already received regulatory acceptance to use the MicroSeq assay for lot release testing across multiple therapeutic modalities. And these include uh, cell and gene therapy applications, monoclonal antibodies, recombinant proteins, vaccines, and virus-like particles. In addition, there are currently over 30 customers going through the process of MicroSeq validation and regulatory submission. And with this, I would like to wrap up the MicroSeq story and highlight our best-in-class uh, worldwide support network that comes with all of our Thermo Fisher scientific solutions, be it for pharma analytics, purification, cell culture, or any other business. Um, we have over 1,400 service and support specialists waiting to partner with you uh, to ensure your success. We have application and insulin training programs available to quick start your implementation process. We provide validation guidance and regulatory support to help you be successful with your application. We provide compliance services to support you with your computer system validation, and we provide service plans for all of your Thermo Fisher scientific instruments. Um, so let me summarize how Thermo Fisher Scientific can accelerate your virus-like particle process development. We offer a robust and efficient chemically defined insect cell bacular virus expression system uh, to produce highly immunogenic VLP-based vaccines. We provide a novel affinity tech and resin system allowing for easy candidate screening. We support you with downstream solutions and expertise to help you develop efficient processes for commercial VLP production. 
We have fully integrated qPCR solutions for impurity and contamination testing available that provide rapid and reliable results to drive informative process decisions. And we provide regulatory compliance solutions with support documentation and expert consultants. Now we do all this because we take pride in our mission to enable you as our customers to make the world healthy, clean, and safe. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Lauren. So um, we do have some questions. The first question is from Maya. What are your recommendations for properly storing my baculovirus stock for use with the XPSS expression system? Uh, thanks, Maya. Great question. Um, our recommendation for a short-term storage uh, for a baculovirus or to keep it at four degrees for about a month. Uh, and for a longer storage, we recommend freezing the virus uh, in minus 80 or liquid nitrogen. And we have recently uh, initiated a long-term study to assess further the stability. And we have found out that adding glycerol to the minus 80 or the liquid nitrogen storage uh, improved the stability even further. Um, so th those are the uh, recommendation that we, we would um, stick to. Great. Thanks. And Chantel, where in the process can you use BacuClear? Is it to be used early in the process or at the end before formulation? Chantel, you may be on mute. Still don't hear Chantel. Let me go ahead and go to Florian. Florian, is the Quant I'm, Studio I'm okay? Is the Quant Studio Seven Flex compatible with the AccuSeq software, and can I use the kits without AccuSeq? Um, good question. Yeah. So for the first part of the question, the Quant Studio Seven Flex is not compatible with the AccuSeq software. The AccuSeq software is only compatible with our 7500 FAST instrument and the Quant Studio 5 uh, instrument with a, one, uh, with a 0 0.1 milliliter block. Um, for the second part of the question, yes, you can use um, uh, our kits without AccuSeq, but you would lose uh, some of the automatic calculations and call functionality, as well as you would probably have to look into um, you know, gaining some of the 21 CFR Part 11 compliance from by other means. Okay. So Chantel, can we hear you now? Okay, I'm gonna go to Maya. Maya, um, is your USP system dedicated to the production of VLP only, or is it also efficient to produce recombinant proteins? Uh, no, that's, that's a good question. Uh, thanks for that. As I mentioned through my talk, the XPSF system is a ver very versatile system, um, and it was actually originally developed for protein expression, uh, but have been also efficiently shown that can be used for VOPs, uh, as well as recently AV. So uh, the answer is that it can be used for, for different classes of proteins uh, very efficiently. Okay. And for Florian, do you have a residual host cell protein quantitation assay for your insect cell system? Um, uh, yeah, uh, thank you for the question. We currently do not have a um, residual host cell, host cell protein quantitation assay, um, but that m might be a project for um, the um, custom, custom solutions uh, team that we have. Um, so please feel uh, feel free to reach out to us, and we can certainly talk about you know designing an essay for you as a custom solution. Thank you. Okay. Okay, great. Chantel, are you there? Hi, I'm back. I'm not sure. Can you hear me now? 
we can hear you. Great. Oh, great. So, <laughs> where in the process can you use BacuClear? Is it to be used earlier or on in the process or at the end before formulation? Yeah, so uh, BacuClear is, uh, is to be used as a scavenger resin. So, it's not meant to bind your target molecule. It could be easily incorporated at the beginning of your process in flow-through mode. Um, so that would be like right after your um, clarification step uh, for your uh, harvest. But uh, you can also use it at the very end. Um, it would require a smaller, uh, a smaller column if you do use it at the end, so that would be one advantage. Um, you would just need to make sure that you uh, check for leach ligands, which we have um, a uh, ELISA kit for that, um, but it can be used either in the beginning or at the end, depending on the uh, needs of your process. Okay, great. So Maya, how can I tell if the XPSF9 cells have been efficiently infected with virus? Good question. Um, so there are two key parameters that we look at to assess whether the X, any insect cells, in particular XPSF9 cells, have been infected. Uh, the first one is looking at the viable cell density. We expect to see a drop in viable cell density um, to about below 80%, um, which can vary, of course, depending on the protein target that is being expressed. Uh, and also, the cell diameter is the second critical parameter. Um, there, there is an um, increase of about three microns, three to four microns uh, at day three uh, in the cell size that also shows that the cells have been efficiently infected. Okay. And Florian, do you recommend performing spike extraction to monitor extraction recovery and do you use the spike recovery to correct results measured in product? Um, yes, thank you for the question. Um, it is. So um, I guess this is this is referring referring to the residual DNA um, um, kit. Um, so in this case, yes, we do recommend performing spike extraction controls. Uh, the recover the spike recovery is one of your acceptance criteria. Um, so yes, you need to do um, spike recovery experiments. Um, we do not, however, recommend to actually um, use the the spike recovery to normalize your uh, quantitation. You can do so, but it's not one of our recommendations. For um, for the MicroSeq assay, we do not recommend doing doing this as like uh, to, you know to quantitate um, recoveries as it is not a uh, quantitation but a limit detection assay. Uh, we don't really um, worry about um, the exact recovery. Okay. Thank for you. Chantel. What kind of XPSS supernatant clarification method filtration do you recommend prior to downstream purification? Uh, yeah, that's a good question also. So, yeah, you would use a, um, a, a, a clarifying filter upstream of the, uh, of the BacuClear resin. Um, that would potentially be, you know, you can have a, a number of different um, uh, alternatives for that. So I would use perhaps a uh, 0.2 micron um, grade filter, uh, but if that's not feasible for your, depending on your, the viscosity and, and, and um, characteristics of your upstream material, I would say that uh, a 0.45 uh, micron filter should suffice. You can use um, uh, DE filters or, um, uh, synthetic fi filters in either case. Okay. For Maya, with the XPSS expression system, when should I harvest my supernatant talent? Yeah, thanks for that question as well. Um, for the harvest time is really dependent, the optimal harvest time is dependent on the protein target. Um, it's generally the best harvest time is about 72 hours, but as I show earlier in my talk, um, for cases of, of new, expressing new proteins, we would always, always recommend doing a time course um, to evaluate where is the best 
the timing harvest time, um, as, as you saw with the VOP that was 72 hours the, with the work with Clint's ones. Um, but we have also seen with the, for example, uh, membrane proteins, uh, the optimal harvest time uh, is more at, at the 48 hours mark uh, before the cell starts lysing. Um, so again, it, it really depends on the protein target and we recommend doing a time course. Okay. So I think we have time for just one more question. If we didn't get to your question, um, we will have the speakers following up with you directly. So if you still have questions, continue to enter them. But the last question for the webcast is going to go to Chantel. Um, Chantel, what elution buffers can you use for CTAG XL? Chantel, we cannot hear you. Okay, can you, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, for CTAG XL, we do recommend uh, 2 molar mag chloride in 20 millimolar tris at neutral pH. Um, but you can also use a competing peptide um, in solution. So, for example, a 50 millimolar SEPEA peptide um, to compete with the CTAG um, and elute your, your material. Um, you can also uh, opt for like a high salt buffer. Um, one molar sodium chloride um, in tris. Um, and in very rare cases, you might need to go um, into an acidic elution buffer condition, such as uh, 50 to 100 millimolar citric acid or glycine um, at pH 3 to increase your yields. Okay. Well, thank you all for the great presentation. And thank you to our audience for joining us. The recorded version of this webcast will be available for on-demand viewing on our website. And as a registered attendee, you'll receive a follow-up email providing you with a direct link. We look forward to having you join us at future Bioprocess International Ask the Expert webcasts. Look for those announcements in your inbox. Goodbye.